Okay. Calling the meeting to order at 7.33. And uh, just wondering who's taking minutes tonight? I'll volunteer, Richard, if nobody else is already uh, taking the honor. Yeah, I can't do it. And you're not John Leo, by the way. No, I, mi no. I misnamed Never you. have been. Sorry. I misnamed you. Go for it for a day if you want. All right, so okay. Then, um, if Chris is taking minutes, thank you. Uh, first order of business is approving minutes for June twenty-one and July twelve. I made a couple of little corrections on them and sent them around. So that's the version that you should be relying on because I did not see anyone circulate any corrections after I did. All right. So just, any... to, just to remove that link as discussed and then I, I was okay with the I think the July meetings and minutes and then the June ones were good right, with wait, May. Wait a second. Let's start with June. Sorry, John. That's okay. So June meeting minutes. Do I hear a motion for the June meeting minutes? Motion to pass the June meeting minutes. Approved, rather. Seconded. Okay. Any objections? If not, okay. we consider them approved. And then the July meeting minutes. You guys, you took the link off or you changed it? I did not take it off because you know, when we had the meeting, there was there was not an objection to that, and you had left it there. I was able to get to the link, but then I guess after the fact, Kim was able to see that link, and she said that was not the correct link. So then we yeah. need to say, okay, we accept the minutes with it. Do we delete that link? Kim, I mean, yeah, I, th I think it's going to be confusing if we have the link in there. And I did follow up with Lois from Westfield, as we had agreed I would do. And she said that's a different event than the one that they are sponsoring. And yes, it's the same day, but it's a different event. So, so we could, so know, we could we just can, we can leave it in there and somehow indicate that you know, maybe footnote it and say, like, uh, upon further confirmation this is not the appropriate link so that you know if, if we said it was the right link during the meeting and it turned out not to be the right link at least we've recorded what we've done in the meeting but we've noted it someplace that that it's not what well, it's not the event it's not for the event that we anticipated it being for so it's not the link to the event that you were talking about correct so, um, and I think this occurred because you either couldn't or uh, didn't, you know, uh, find out that that link, where that link pointed to. I did not look at that link during our meeting, so that's correct. And then I talked to Lois just the other day, who told me that they don't have a link yet and they don't have a flyer yet for their event. But the link that I have for this event is a different event than the one that they are doing because they don't have those corporate sponsors and that is a separate and distinct event. Okay. Um, might be okay. I'm thinking, you know, even though we, John put the link in, maybe it's just okay to if everyone is in agreement, we just delete the link because we're referencing the event, but not the link. Any? Yeah, and these were just okay. draft minutes, weren't they? Yes. Yeah. So I, I think I think that's just 
something that was in a draft that comes out of the final version. That's what I'm thinking too. I agree. I just, I just want to see if we want if we agree on a common front to move forward, like plan putting links in there to make people be able to see what you know certain events we're talking about in the future, just obviously the right ones. Well, obviously it was the wrong one according to Kim. And I know. That's the fine. thing to do in the in moving forward is anytime someone does put in a link that we have some sort of confirmation from either the person who is in charge of uh, this topic or uh, the whole group that this is the correct link. We, otherwise, we just leave links out. Um, but I, I, that would likely unfold the same way as this did. I mean, John came across it. He put it in the minutes. And it's up to us to review the minutes for, accur right. for accuracy. And that's basically what we're doing here right now. Right. OK, so we're, we're saying we'll delete that link. I don't think there's any correction to the statement that he made, but we just delete the link. Right. So I, I'm agreeing that, it, John, I, I agree with you that it will be helpful to put in the appropriate links. Um, but if we, for whatever reason, get it wrong at the meeting, then we have leeway to revise or omit the link provided once we've done a review. Right. And I think in general, we should try to, you know, confirm, okay, that is the correct link. If we're doing links, we should try to confirm so that we don't get into a whole mess of, oh, that's not the link. All right, anything else about the minutes on July 12th? Corrected with removal of the link? Do I hear a motion? I move, to, I move to approve the, those minutes um, as amended and as agreed. I second that exactly. Okay. Thank you. Without objection, we consider that accepted. Hearing on agenda items, uh, we have a guest. So, any comments on agenda items? From Steve Carellis. I have no comments tonight. Go on. All right, so we're moving on. Uh, we have two uh, plans, the Board of Ed plans for Columbia and Mountain Park and 40 Russo Place. The, if you looked at the emails from uh, Connie Valenti, you see that basically it's a letter, a couple of letters from an architectural firm that is going to be in charge of uh, uh, renovations for Columbia Mountain Park, and I think they might have been uh, one of the other schools too. In any case, there are not any detailed architectural plans, but it seems that uh, they're uh, doing renovations, uh, such as putting in new roofs or putting in uh, pavement and replacing windows. So um, my suggestion was simply to uh, do our general guidelines, uh, which are broader, that is, include more actions than uh, uh, what they are planning to do, but just as a recommendation, do things like, if it's possible, uh, put in a pervious surface uh, and do other things that are environmentally uh, helpful. Any discussion? Richard, I did notice on the Columbia Middle School, um, there was one set of drawings at the very end of that packet that may have indicated that they were expanding the road behind the school slightly, didn't really say by how much. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, you know, imagine it's going to be an increase in impervious surface. So I don't know if that opens the door for us to make more specific recommendations about green infrastructure or permeable pavement or something of that ilk to try and reduce that impervious surface. If it and especially if it if the impervious surface did, did they indicate exactly where I didn't see that particular thing did they indicate where that would be? <clears throat> trying to scroll because through the if there, was there a map showing where that was? The very last two pages of the packet, um, specifically for Columbia Middle School, okay. shows it's almost like the cover sheet of a bit larger set of drawings. 
And if you zoom in, there is uh, the very last page. Uh, there's a map that shows parking, parking lot replacement and upgrade. Okay, I see that. Let me share the screen. And um, and Robert is entering the discussion too. This page here. Yes. Yeah, so if you if you look behind the school, there's a note that says uh, rear of building widened road. Plus or minus sixteen hundred square feet. Oh yes. Okay. Kind of, you know, they don't give any more detail than that, and it's kind of hard to tell what's because they don't have a translucent uh, surface there. It's hard to tell what's originally paved and what's not. Let me see if I can enlarge this. To... And they're keeping the feeders to the uh, the trails there. I presume it looks like they are. All right. I'm satisfied. So the, the, this area is actually the area, this is Plainfield Avenue here. This is the loop coming around in front of the school and the Board of Ed. This is the parking lot on the north side. And there's apparently impervious surface on the west side of that building here. And they're saying plus or minus 16,000 feet. And I would ask, I think, uh, Robert, you're in the room. Are you? Can you? Uh, do you have any knowledge of this? I thought he was coming into the room, and I don't see him now. disappeared. He was coming in, I admitted him, and then he disappeared. So um, this area back here, I'm thinking, is not in the uh, wetlands part of the property. But I would not want to say that for sure. And it looks like there's also something coming here. And here, right? Yeah, it's hard to tell because if you just look at the if you just look at Google Maps satellite view, which is what they overlaid here. Right. It looks like they're just repaving what's already there, but it, then there's that reference to widening. So on this undetailed map, it's hard to tell exactly what they're doing. I don't know if this is even the time where we would make such a comment, but it was just something I noticed when I looked at it. Right. I mean, that, that's the thing about this. This is a, a general, I would expect there'd be more detailed plans at some point. And I'm not, so it's just saying as, asphalt parking lot to be repaved plus or minus 138,000 and the roofing to be replayed. Hey, keep the, I'll, I'll try and decipher while you were doing this. I've got Google Earth view and right now it looks to be the, the same picture, but you keep that there. Uh, I think it'll stay there if I go someplace else. What I want to do is look at um, a map of the wetlands in that area. You're not, you're still just seeing the map, right? I mean that. No, we're, we're, we see the wetlands now. Okay. Well, that's okay. You can, you, why don't you do that because but well, my first view, just FYI, looked like it was, this, there, there is, there is nothing on the map indicating anything that's new. I mean, on their drawing. 
<laughs> okay, so oh, that's funny. The wetlands map splits right at that point. But it looks like if you look here, this area here is, I think, the area that's being referred to. And if that's the area, then that's not in the wetlands. The wetland, here's Columbia Avenue coming down. And that's in the buffer zone to the wetlands. Yeah, the parking area seems to be well out of the wetlands. Yeah, exactly. And that widening of the road also. Well, here, okay, here's a little bit of overlapping. So let me come to here, here. Okay, and here you can see this area, Forest Avenue, Brook. So here's Hamilton Avenue. Here's where the school is. Here's where the parking lot is. Here's the back of the parking lot. But this area is really by the baseball field at the edge of the baseball field. So it's not in the wetlands or the buffer zone to the wetlands. So I can go. Yeah, so this is not in, in the wetlands or the buffer zone to the wetlands. But in any case, the, the point would be, Chris, okay, could they include some uh, pervious pavement in some parts here, especially in parking areas. What are they doing here I, and why they're doing that? I have no idea. I mean, it I seems know. the scope of the is a mill and overlay of the existing parking lot. I don't know if this is something that we can recommend if they're going to replace the resurface the parking lot. Can we do some sort of a permeable pavement over the entire thing? Exactly, exactly. I, I don't know either. Uh, I'm, I'm just suggesting that they consider it. it. It doesn't hurt us to put recommendations in there. So, if, for instance, the walkways, if we could do pervious uh, coverage at least. Um, and this kind of goes back to the thing where if we capture that data to see how much stuff they ignore of our recommendations, you can always make a case later that they need to listen to us more. So, it never hurts to make recommendations. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, yep, yep. Given that all this is speculation, it, so, it, it looks Steve, like... Just let, me, just let me finish here so that I make a note on this. Okay. So we're saying um, specifically consider pervious pavement. Well, what else were we going to say, John or Chris? I would say, per, yeah, can they consider a pervious pavement alternative for the resurfacing at Columbia Middle School? Right, okay. Or can we say for reasonable sections or do we mean for all of it? I don't know um, why we would limit ourselves. Let them tell us they can only do it in certain locations. Uh, okay, fair pervious, enough. Right. Cool. There's a guideline for pervious pavement that you don't uh, do everything in pervious pavement. Generally, it's the parking spots that get pervious pavement. Or the gutters, perhaps. Right. But not the areas where vehicles are driving. Uh, okay, so Steve, you wanted to say something? Yeah, just just as a, a food for thought when you find out what's really going on. If as I went back and forth once you brought the uh, the, the map of the building and the the surfaces, it looks like behind the school there's a, an existing pathway versus a road. And they may be, it looks like when I compare the diagram with Google Earth, which is the current situation, it looks like they may maybe want to make uh, the pathway more of a road, which would be a logical widening. And it looks like there might be a little bit more surface back there where the that path starts, if I compare one with the other. So that's may, may be, from that notation, what they're talking about. Well, there seems to be a sidewalk that is going around from right. the back side of the building 
Right. And that looks like, you know, if you, if, from the map you were looking at, if you go to the top of it where the parking lot ends and then behind the building, it's clear from Google Earth there's a pathway, but it's also wider. It looks like it's it's a wider, you know, impervious surface already. Um, and I don't, I'm not sure from the trees what a road would connect it to. But, it, but basically, it doesn't seem that the, the, the Google map picture and, and, and their drawing doesn't seem too much different. Nothing, nothing obviously being added. Wait, I see that maybe Robert has now joined. Robert, are you in the meeting? Can you comment on the construction at Columbia Middle School, the impervious surface? Um, I just joined now um, and I've just got the documents now. Can you give me a background on what information you have? Because there's a couple of different things going on. What are you referring specifically to? This is a, uh, a documents that came from the um, board secretary. That is not the school board secretary, but the zoning board and, and uh, zoning board secretary. Uh, that there's going that the schools are going to be uh, doing some construction. And I. Uh, could send you that, but you probably already have it. No, I think um, I'm not on that committee, but there's a, a couple of different things going on. The big thing kind of in public is construction of bathrooms. Um, a couple of elementary schools. This is this not is, CMS. Right. This is uh, Columbia Middle School and, uh, and uh, the Mountain Park School. Uh, they're basically doing renovations, doing work on roofs, windows, uh, pavement. Okay, so that's routine stuff. I, it doesn't sound like that's the bathrooms. Right. It's. I think it is routine. Uh, yeah, it's seasonal. We tend to do that seasonally. Right. And there was one particular drawing that came up. I can share that drawing again, just so okay. in case you... Are not familiar. I got to come back and go share a screen. And here, and here. Can you see that now? Yes, I can. So the blue is apparently pavement. Correct. And down here is Plainfield Avenue. Mm -hmm. Here's the driveway in front of the school and the Board of Ed. Mm -hmm. Here's the parking lot. So this is north, going this way. Mm -hmm. And then over here, there's a note, widen road, plus or minus 16,000 square feet over here. And oh. I'm not sure what's going on there. I, I tried to. Let me take a picture and I try and consult someone while we're on. The, the point for us, uh, Robert, is that um, we would recommend that, if possible, that the board consider, you know, environmental, uh, doing environmental things. And there's a general green design guidance that we developed several years ago. And whenever there's construction, the zoning board sends that to the applicant. And that includes things like, could you use pervious pavement, uh, you know, uh, consider you know, what you're doing uh, uh, as far as, you know, what kind of windows you're using, that they're energy efficient windows, th those kinds of things. Okay, now, since they applied and you seem to be aware of it, did you routinely send that information out? Well, that's the thing. We would, we would do that. That's why we're looking at this tonight. But if I look at the rest of this document, and I'm scrolling up for you to look, this is basically what we're, we're getting a letter from Solutions Architecture that's saying, we're going to serve as the architect. We yeah. don't see any real detailed um, um, drawings or plans uh, as to what exactly uh, the materials are that are be being used. Uh, so I presume that the Solutions Architecture will do that at some point. But we may not see that because it's the school board. I haven't seen, you know, 
drawings or applications come from the school board. But doesn't, well, get, getting to applications, <clears throat> but don't the approvals need to come from the town and therefore you have to see that in order for us to have the approvals? I, I would hope so. But as I said, I don't, <laughs> I have never seen that happen. So I'm, I'm not saying it wouldn't happen. I just don't know. Oh, um, you've never, you've never seen us you, submit any plans plan. to the boards for review. And here, uh, you, here you see Governor Livingston High School Education Adequacy Components, a lot of indoor uh, things where, you know, we wouldn't expect to be involved with that. Multi-purpose room finish upgrades, Columbia Middle School, various roof replacements, various window replacements, door replacements. So it's a general letter that's, you know, listing all the things that would happen. And the school board secretary seemed to indicate we're not going to see much more than this. Oh, she would know. Yes. Um, well, our architect, Frank, who this is from, probably doesn't really generally provide that just in general. I'm sure it's not you guys. Do you have a list? Can you, you know, kindly request certain information? That's, that's what we were proposing before you came in. That's okay, what I was Yeah, I would do it in writing. Yeah. There's a, there's a whole list that we developed to make recommendations to be more environmentally friendly, if you will, just as a general. And that's why, that's why we're discussing this tonight. Okay, on our, we just hired a new board administrator, replaced Donna permanently, and that's Julie Cott, K-O-T. K-O-T, okay. I'm going to see. Is she coming from within the school system or? From no, no, she's an external hire. The okay. person you may be dealing with the last month after Donna was uh, interim. Okay. She's very nice. I like her because she's a lawyer too. Oh, terrific. Okay. Um, so uh, coming back to the recommendation uh, for the Board of Ed plans that we send uh, recommendations for green infrastructure to uh, uh, the board secretary for her to uh, further uh, send on to the school board. Richard, could we, and feel free to say no to this or disagree, but can we take a different approach where we ask for the environmental commission to receive additional info about the project and evaluate opportunities more specifically to implement green infrastructure in this case i see uh, i see the repaving of such a large parking lot as a as a large opportunity that we might be able to get involved with well i like that idea chris because we're talking about as you say a large parking lot which means it's a heat island and it would be good to try to reduce that heat island so uh, that would be something else that we could uh, recommend to try to reduce the heat island effect. Uh, um, so can our action be to request more information for, for the Environmental Commission to be more involved in that particular? We can, we can certainly ask, but in, in any case, I think at this point we should make a general recommendation uh, and, and say, uh, can you provide more information as you know, environment for the aspects of the project that are um, would be of interest to the Environmental Commission. So I can put that in the memo. I right. see the name and email address of Julie in the chat. I see. I saw that you posted. Yes. Thanks, Great. Robert. Okay, has everybody agreed on that? What Chris suggested that we ask for further details on the plan? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Narrate, Kimberly, John. Yes, oh, that's, that's a live person shaking her head, okay. All right. Uh, 
then Chris, why don't you put that in the form of a motion? Sure, motion to uh, request additional information on uh, the project at Columbia Middle School relevant to Berkeley Heights Environmental Commission uh, scope. Okay, and also as part of that, we would make a general recommendation for environmental uh, and green design uh, aspects of the project. So should we amend that motion to also include the same for Mountain Park? Yeah, that was a oh, sloppy motion. Or, yes, for both. Yeah, I, I, uh, I got the impression that there was so, some duplication in, in the two uh, files. So yes, both. Okay, second that. Okay. Any objections? If not, uh, then I consider that accepted. Okay. New business ordinance on sports courts. Hmm. Uh, this was an email. Richard, we. I'm sorry, we skipped uh, 40 Rousseau. Oh, shoot. That was the complicated 40 one. 40 Rousseau. Okay. 40 Rousseau is on the uh, table. Discussion of the recommendation for 40 Rousseau. And we had some comments from David. Yeah. Was there a um, a revised recommendation? I, I, didn't want to, I, I didn't want to revise that uh, until we discussed it, um, David, because I thought you had some pertinent uh, comments. Um, and now... Yeah, so specifically... Um, Um, it wasn't clear if there would be landscape screening required. If there is, we should have, um, we should be consulted in that and be in a position to recommend what kind of vegetation. I, right, and I did not get uh, an impression that there would be a landscape screen. I, from the comments from the zoning officer, he requires an eight-foot fence as screening. Yeah, that's what that's how I read it as well, Richard. Well, that's easier. Yeah. Uh, okay. the, the, the next point that you make about the proposed uh, parking plan goes right up to the property line on all sides. And there is a, a uh, what did they call it, a drainage uh, easement. Even. Uh, on one side of that property, on along the edge of the property, and that seems to have trees. It was not clear to me whether those trees are on the property or on the neighboring property. I couldn't figure that out because the survey did not indicate where trees were. I, I'm, it was fairly, I'm fairly sure that a number of, a number of those trees are on that property, the and property then, in question. Right, and it seems like the parking would be right up against the trees. Did you get that impression too? The, the parking would be to the full extent of the lot. Right, my to expectation, the edge of the, right to the edge of the lot. Yeah, my expectation is that those trees are on the lots and those trees would be cleared. Agreed. And I, and so, I saw, I'm sorry, Chris. I was, I was just saying I agree with, with David's interpretation of the plan. Yeah. So we should ask them specifically to confirm if there are trees that would be removed number and size. And what I don't get is there seemed to be a requirement to mark the parking spaces, but yet that that property for the most part seems to be unpaved. It's gravel, yeah, or something, gravel. dirt, dirt. Yeah. yeah, I think the town engineer made a, either called out the ordinance that requires that the, the spots be properly delineated the pavement it actually references pavement um but i know david you said you interpreted that they're not proposing that they repave that whole lot yeah you look at the the numbers the the, the numbers were the only thing that i saw yeah. very low right the numbers they're not changing low. that much right 
I think it's worth I think it's worth confirming that in our recommendation. We assume the lot will not be paved in you know in its entirety. Mm -hmm. And then asking how they plan to delineate the parking spaces. <laughs> Yep. Unless they park one bus and then just park all the rest next to it. That That's what they'll end up doing after the first week. Yep. Oh, of course. Or, um, so how does the presence of a drainage easement impact their plan? Um, what, what, what does that mean? That, does that just mean that the, the township could have the right to access a drain that's below, below the ground? So they could park over it. That's my general understanding. I have a drainage easement on my property, and that's what I've been told. As so long yeah, I've, got, I've got the same. Yeah. Can't build any permanent structures that would impede the town from accessing their infrastructure if they need to get to it. Right. But I, I doubt very much a park parking space would, would be a an obstacle. Yeah. So that's probably not an impediment. Interestingly, there's currently several structures on the lot within that drainage easement. And uh, that's right. And there seemed to be an indication of that we, they would remove a couple of those structures. Yeah. But the other aspect is that there are earlier uh, documents that seem to indicate that there is a uh, stream that's running where that drainage easement is indicated. Uh, or there's a ditch. I don't know whether it was a drainage ditch uh, at some point. So this is all very confusing to me. It looks like it's a drainage ditch, as best I could tell. And it sort of runs between, more or less between that and an and adjacent property. Right. And so if that's a drainage ditch, that would seem to me su to suggest that some of the runoff from the property would go into the drainage ditch. Based on the, the grading plan, it certainly does. Yeah. Yeah. It's not it's not a completely flat property, so there's correct, right. And uh, the third point you made, uh, David, um, A removal of any existing structures, material trees on the site should be reviewed with the township engineer. Yeah, I think uh, that's in relation to, to the stormwater management plan. Yeah, I yeah I think that's stronger. But I did I did state in the re recommendation that a stormwater management plan to be reviewed by the township engineer. Um, I did get the sense that this lot is pretty small for what they want to do with it. So um, they might be hard pressed to add much by way of um, swales or whatever. Right. Um, well, and I, I, that's not going to stop me from trying. No, I think the, uh, uh, make, making the recommendation is fine. Um, and also, the, it may be that because these uh, employees are driving buses, if one employee drives a bus away, there's probably room for two or three vehicles in that spot. So then that may be a case of uh, in hopscotch, if you will. You know, one vehicle goes out, three vehicles come in, that kind of thing. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, and as you indicated, it's not strictly within our purview. Not our problem. Yeah. All right. So what I've got is we should know that uh, if there are trees to be removed, confirm whether the lot will be paved. Um, how is the parking to be delineated and runoff and the stormwater management? Anything else? No, I think that's good. Then somebody might not make a recommendation to um, accept uh, the recommendation as amended. Yep, proposed to accept the um, EC recommendation for that site review as described, as amended. 
Seconded. All right. No objections. We move on. Uh, ordinance on sports courts. Uh, this was something that uh, Mr. Foraker pointed out in the uh, uh, annual report uh, from the uh, zoning board. And you will see that they are proposing, or at least the draft of the ordinance is proposing, including sports courts and permitted uh, what would you say, uh, accessories uh, on property. Um, I did not contact uh, uh, the secretary about this, uh, and I did not see that this was coming up as a an agenda item very soon. So um, the point for me as an environmental commissioner would be if somebody is putting a sports court on their property that they are staying within the impervious surface limit of their property. But Mr. Foraker is making the statement that it would also be causing noise if, if people were building sports courts. I'm not an expert to make a judgment on that, but uh, welcoming any comments from the commission. So one thought is that in the past, and this, excuse me, harkens back to maybe two or three years ago when we had certain applications to build certain basketball courts, um, we actually wound up recommending that the um, proposal not go through because a number of the different courts in different locations around town were proposed to be built in um, wetland zones or riparian zones or in other zones. So I don't have the language of the ordinance in front of me, but if if we're giving like a blanket okay to go ahead and build sports courts, places similar to those areas where we said, no, you can't build it because it's not good in the area that <laughs> you're doing it in because it's a wetland or something else like that. Um, this might green light all of those projects that we previously had said no to plus more. That's my concern. Anyone else? I'm trying to pull up that page. Uh, hold on a second. Okay. Here's what uh, appears to be. This is in the annual report. So come here. All right, so it's uh, Municipal Land Use Procedures, Part 6, Article 6.3, Section 631, Subsection B. And it's saying permitted accessory unit uses. And the last one, number nine, private residential outdoor sports court. Um, you also see private residential swimming pool here. So in any of these areas, any of these accessories, it, it seems to be that it's just a general permission to have that accessory. Does that mean that they could have that accessory? It seems to me, if I'm recalling correctly, you always have to apply for a permit for any of these accessories. Uh, for a swimming pool, a tennis court, a uh, detached private garage storage sheds, right? Not exceeding 100 square feet. All of these are accessories that people are supposed to uh, apply for permits for. So it's not automatic 
that someone could say, oh, I'm going to build an outdoor sports court, and they would, it would be, a permit would be issued. If that outdoor sports court exceeds imperfect, total impervious surface for the property, then they'd have to apply for a variance. Would, would that still be the case if it's, and I'm just wondering what historical precedent is, because if it is now a permitted accessory use, do you still need to get a permit for a permitted accessory use? I think the idea, I think the language is saying it's a permitted accessory use. In other words, you need it's to, it's allowable. Need, yeah, yeah. No, but, not that it's allowable. It's a permit. You need a permit. Yeah, I would say that. I would say the answer is yes, because if you if you want to get a storage shed in the town of Berkeley Heights that's less than 100 square feet, you still need to get a permit from the town. Correct. And you still need to meet all of the off, the the offset requirements and all other requirements in the town ordinance. So as long as you meet all of those things, you you should, in my opinion, be permitted to have an outdoor sports court as long as you're not violating any of the other requirements in the ordinance. Correct. Do we, do we happen to know what this said before? Is this an entirely new section or is it just adding new stuff on? It's, yeah. adding, it's adding number nine. That's okay. the only okay. addition. So one other thing that, that Tom brought up in his email to, to the commission was uh, conflicts between residents, um, but also lighting issues. Is there an ordinance for lighting requirements uh, with the town? I'm just not familiar. I, I am not sure. I think there is an ordinance for lighting requirements and I'm not sure what that ordinance says. And re especially in regard to places like outdoor tennis courts or swimming pools. Um, I have not looked at that ordinance uh, in a while. Because I could, I could certainly see that being something worth objecting to. That stadium lighting installed in your neighbor's backyard might be a nuisance. Oh, exactly. And, and an environmental hazard for what it's worth. I'm going to guess that there probably is a lighting ordinance because um, I don't even remember how many years ago it was, but I, a couple of years ago, they proposed putting outdoor lighting, night lighting, up at GL. And the residents there, there was a huge backlash and the lighting got halted. Um, so there probably is something that came of that that's probably on the books. I don't know what it is, but I would think there is something. I would expect there is something with lighting. I do not know what it is and I don't have the time to look into that tonight. Um, so the, uh, the discussion here, uh, I think we need to limit at this point to what we're seeing on this permitted accessory uses. The, and I think Chris and I both have the same impression that it's going to require a permit and if that, if that accessory doesn't meet other requirements such as uh, being in a, a wetlands or uh, exceeding the total impervious surface, then the, the, the resident has to apply for a variance. I'm happy to, you know, follow up with uh, the um, zoning uh, secretary to see if there's any plans on moving forward with this. I guess my question is, on what grounds would we as an environmental commission oppose this? Assuming exactly, right, exactly the grounds that I'm suggesting, at least that that is, if it were to be in a wetlands or in a right, but maximum pervious surface, you know, it's it's a, for us that um, we would oppose it, just as we would oppose an outdoor tennis court or a swimming pool. 
or yeah, that would, any... that would be on a plan by plan basis, an application by application basis, not as a as not a as a blanket issue. opposition. Yeah, that's that's my point. Is I don't think we have any reason to to blanketly oppose sports courts. I'm with Chris on that. Yeah, should, should we ask for clarification as to what exactly a sports court might include aside from a basketball court? Because number two does clearly state outdoor tennis court. And this seems to be a much more vague and broad category. And while, while I agree with what everyone else has said, it would be nice to get clarity for what might fall under that rubric, just so that we, just so that it's clear. Everything else in the statute, in, in this particular statute seems very clearly stated, and this seems really broad relative to everything else. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. So we'll carry this forward and I will ask uh, the secretary, if she can clarify, or somebody can clarify what that what the sports court. Uh, if there's no more discussion, we move on. Scout projects. No, no, no scout projects. Community garden. Am I, am I muted? No. Community Garden. Oh, you're not muted. Renee. I don't think Renee's here. I think she is. No, she's here. Oh, I'm sorry. Came in muted. Late. She may be in the process of being here. There we go. I'm here. All right. I'm sorry. Which agenda item do we get to? I... Community Garden. Oh, so Community Garden, Um, everything's going great. I think we're just kind of trying to police everyone and, and in terms of, you know, making sure there's weeding going on, what to do with the bees, um, you know, donation gardens going well. We're planning for the luminary um, fundraiser coming up for, for winter walk later this at the end of this year. Um, and I know Richard, you had asked a question earlier this week about whether or not um, township residents could bring compost to the garden and, and I think we, we agreed um, unilaterally that it, it's too logistically challenging and that's something we, we would consider for the future, but we're just trying to figure it out itself, ourselves and there's enough compost that we're generating from the garden that we wouldn't be able to, to kind of get the you know, additional intake from, from township residents. And I hope everyone saw there's, there's been some good media on, on the, the bee project um, you know, it's, it's been out there and, um, you know, I think it's, it, it was a phenomenal effort, you know, huge for, for environmental concerns for our town and, and even beyond and, and awareness. So um, great things happening at the garden. Okay, thank you. Uh, Stormwater Ordinance, uh, I have no updates. Uh, Anybody? Nothing. Nothing? Okay. Adopt a drain. Um, okay, so I have been working with Angus to get our sub page for Adopt a Drain up and running. Um, we have a lot of good content. Angus is assembling everything so that it's, it's up and running and ready to go live when we do our ribbon cutting. Um, Currently, a ribbon cutting is scheduled for Saturday, August 7th at 10 a.m. Um, in front of the municipal complex. We have, um, as a requirement for our grant, we had to have signs that have the PSENG logo on it. So I am in receipt of those signs. We have two very nice signs that we will be putting up um, for the ribbon cutting. Um, Mayor Angie is very excited about participating. She has um, obtained a ginormous pair of scissors and red ribbon for the ribbon cutting. Um, and Angus is trying to script out something cute because our thought was, why not have 
um, not only this be a photo op for us and something that's newsworthy to put in the papers when we watch this, but um, if we can videotape this, we can potentially use this in something that um, ANJAC sponsors or Sustainable Jersey sponsors later on, um, and we can submit our video to it. And I know we did that previously, and while we didn't win, we have high hopes for, for this year, if we make it cute enough that we will be able to at least do well in the running for that too. So um, that is being planned right now. If anyone is interested in being in this video during the ribbon cutting, um, please let me know. And if you would like to include your kids or your spouse or anyone else, let me know that too. And we'll try to script it so that anyone who wants to be present and have a role will be able to do so. And um, just separately, if you have a drain, um, and you haven't been reporting your totals, if you could just enter that, that would be fabulous. And um, for those who would like to adopt a drain and haven't yet, I encourage you to adopt your drain. And that's all. So Kim, two questions. So you said Friday morning is when you'll be doing the-, the no, no, Saturday morning. Oh, Saturday morning, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then for the adopt a drain, would you mind just sending us again how we would sign up? Um, sure. I just for me, it's lost in email garbage. So if you yeah, I'm happy to recirculate. No Thank worries, you. Renee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You repeat the time. 10 a.m. on Saturday, August 7th, um, at the municipal building by Adrian to be selected. Okay. Um, Kim, I, I do have some, I don't know if you need this, but I do have some ugly pictures of badly stuffed drains um, that I've just been taking on my walk. So I'm sure you have enough, but if you need any more, let me know. Um, I mean, that would be, that would be great. If Honestly, if you had a before and after picture, that would be even more fabulous because we know what the um, clogged up, leafy, not so pretty drains look like. And if we're able to show this, this is what a drain looks like before we clean it. And this is what it looks like after we clean it. Um, people get to see how individuals can make a difference because I know Westfield has gotten some backlash from, um, not from the community, but from people running for political office in the community um, who want to make the point that like, well, our DEP does enough cleanings, we don't have to clean it on our own. So if we can show that, well, yes, we're here to just complement what DEP does. And while DEP does a fine job, they, they can't do it on as regular a basis as individuals who help out the process. So that's why having the before and after picture would be helpful than, more helpful than just a before picture. Well, um, I'm, I'm happy that some people are finding that they can clean up trains. I'm finding nothing, so. <laughs> My but wait until the fall comes, Richard. Nothing, and it took a minute. <laughs> uh, but there was more serious problem than that right next to the drain, because this drain is right next to a stream. Um, somebody dumped some construction debris, and I reported that to the town. It wasn't dumped into the drain. Uh, it was dumped about 15, 20 feet away from the drain at the at the top of uh, the bank of the stream. Uh, if you see people dumping next to streams, you should report it. On to stormwater management education campaign. Do you have anything, John? Um, no, but Richard, I'd like to move to uh, remove that from the agenda and put it in with the communications or the monthly newsletter piece. Uh, because all we need to do 
from now on is when we have newsletter topics, either it covers a storm order item or if we're absent of a communications piece, we can uh, develop content for a storm order and hit that target. So we can combine those two or remove this. Good, I will do that. Thank you, John. Thank you. State of Jersey Actions, we have Township ass Assets and you saw an email from Kevin, so we're still waiting to hear from him. Sustainable Jersey Green Team. Kim, do you want to say anything there? Yeah, I still have to organize that. It's okay. We're, we're, you know, we've got lots to do. Direct install. Um, I have not heard back from the economic development uh, group, but they said they were going to look at that. Reusable bag education. Oh, this came up. And we have our newest member. Do you want to uh, talk about that, Miri? Um, well, I was just looking at what I could contribute, and I was just looking at the different topics um, on Sustainable Jersey on their website, and I think it's something that we could look into. Um, I didn't know if, like, we wanted to take that on or how exactly that works if we decide all together. Um, but I think it's really doable. And I mean, I think it's just something that we have to just sort of train people into getting like the habit of doing so. And I feel like, you know, relatively like a cheap, easy way to like cut down on waste. Oh, um, you're muted. No, no argument here, um, and you saw the action. So, and you know about uh, the state uh, passing a law uh, uh, regarding uh, one single-use bags and encouraging the use of reusable bags. So this is a, a timely ac action to uh, start doing. Uh, and Kim was go going to get involved with this because we had proposed a, a township ordinance, but now the, uh, you know, it's on a state level. So it's still uh, a timely thing to do. Um, uh, just, just to add to that, the, the ordinance did pass. We just haven't enforced it. Right. Um, so it, it is on the books. It is, it is a law. <laughs> um, we just haven't enforced it, but people are going to be in for, I think, a rude awakening come May of next year when the state law goes into effect. Um, so well, I think, I think that's the point, Kim. We don't want, we want to. Yeah, it, exactly. Exactly. So exactly. So Nareet, if you have ideas or if you want to spearhead or take the lead on this, particular action, um, I think you pretty much have our support in doing so. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely look more into it and see what I can do, yeah. And also to add to that, any any education on thin use, uh, thin film plastics counts as first towards a stormwater education campaign. Yep, so it's a double, it's a double hit. Um, I mean, you can talk offline with Kim or with me, um, both of us, if you want, um, about this because uh, uh, it's, um, you know, an action that we get points for with Sustainable Jersey. And as John said, uh, if we're educating people at the same time about single-use plastics, uh, which would make sense, uh, we get points there, too. Okay. All right, we will do. Yeah. The brown fields was another aspect, but maybe if you get involved with reusable bag education, then do you want to also do brown fields or just focus on reusable bag education? That's a question. Um, I think I'll focus on reusable bag education just because I feel like I'm still new to this and like understanding the processes and everything. Okay. Um, the brownfields, the one, there's one of uh, the brownfield actions that has expired. I, I'm going to take a look at that and see how difficult that is to just renew it. It may not be difficult to renew. 
But there's another uh, aspect of the brown fields which is more complicated. So that we'd have to look at in the long run. Uh, tree ordinance. Unless there was a, some discussion on brown fields, I'm sorry. If not, then tree ordinance. Uh, this uh, licensed tree expert uh, returned uh, his comments on the tree ordinance to me this week. I will take a look at them and uh, then uh, discuss with Tom Baco. Uh, once I've cleaned up the document, I'm happy to share it with everybody. Uh, but it's uh, got to be cleaned up first. Peppertown Park. Uh, nothing to report. Uh, recycling. Anybody? Uh, we don't have Angus here. If not, we go on to topics for township newsletter. Um, well, next month, um, I, I have to. I'll, I'll coordinate with the the people who run that to see what the deadline is because um, we want to promote the Adopt a Dream program. And if we're coming out with it on August seventh, that will be an excellent way to promote the program following its launch, public launch. And also, did, did we? I don't think we this year we've done anything about mowing and leaving uh, your grass leaves on the lawn. Uh, wouldn't hurt to do that again if we haven't done that this season. Does anybody recall? It's been a while, so I think that's a good idea, Richard. Okay. I will take a look at what was written the last time, see if we need to update. Yeah, I think we've gotten out of the habit of. Um refreshing some of these announcements given that the schedule for the publication was a bit um, uncertain. Right. The right. Sake River Park. That's David and John. So we have, um, you know, with the AARP grant, we probably can combine those two into a, a trails project because that AARP grant will fall under that umbrella. Uh, for Passaic River Park at the moment, there's uh, no change. There's really no development. The the question I had for you two was that date that L'Oreal is has as a volunteer day. I think that's a weekday, and I don't remember whether it's a Thursday yeah. or Friday. It's a I believe a Thursday. It's mid. It's is, middle of the week. Is that going to be workable for you too? Because they cannot change that date. I I cannot, but if. Are they stuck up for options? Because we'll use them to clear out a, a trail section if, if we have to. Um, but it has to be on that date. That's what yes, I'm saying. Yes, I know. I know. I'll make it. I would make it work for myself. But I don't know if it's a an event that will be well advertised publicly because people want it to be on the weekends. So if it, it's a non-public event, more just to get a project done with well, whoever, whoever can make it, maybe. Yeah, I mean, you could make it a public event and ask invite other people. But the thing with L'Oreal is they will provide, and I'm taking a guesstimate here, um, anywhere from a half dozen to a dozen people. Uh, they need to know that in advance, uh, how many people are, are we're making available. And then uh, part of that is, and what the county does, it provides gloves and uh, other tools that might be needed uh, for the work that's being done. Uh, so, and then that is a limited amount of time. I think it's basically the morning. So it would run, let us say, from 9 o'clock till 11.30 or 12. I don't have the exact time frame, but it's approximately that uh, three or four hours that uh, they do that. Richard, let's... I'm, I mean, I'll make the executive decision to say, let's go ahead and do it because, um, and I, I want to start with saying the, on the AARP grant, that is still not public yet, but it will be in two days. But part of the requirement will be to use volunteers to actually go out and score existing trails. So we have a score, we have a scorecard we've developed right? and okay. for different generations of people to go out and score trails. So we can use them for that project since it's, it'll be a requirement. Right, I, I'm I, I'm happy if you can use them. It's it's uh, because if you if you say okay, we can do X with them, and you need say 
uh, just, you know, five people to do something. We can then also ask Gloria, well, uh, you know, over by the soccer fields on, on Springfield Avenue, we need to clear that up. That's typically where L'Oreal would work. Are they only for cleaning? No, they, they're for whatever okay. volunteer activity you want to do. But I'm, I'm just saying you can divide that up. That AARP grant does require volunteerism, and we're going to need 20 plus, plus people. So I'm, I think, yeah, uh, I'll make myself available that day to lead the volunteers if they're supplying some. I just, I was just wary of advertising to the residents of Berkeley Heights on a weekday. It wouldn't be a fairly public publicized event because it's not a Saturday or Sunday. So you, A, you want to get good turnout and B, you get people upset. Richard, uh, this, this is a corporate event. It's going on, Renee. Right. Yeah. So I think it's a corporate event because we have that too. And, and I'm sure David, you do as well, yeah, where it's like a, a community involvement day and they, yeah, exactly. they, they look for um, projects to, to work on so we can offer them one. Right. So oh, it's yeah, only exactly. L'Oreal employees. We won't, we yeah. would not open that up to um, Berkeley Heights okay. residents. Right. Correct. You don't need to I... open it up to, to residents. But the point but is yes. you need to be able to tell L'Oreal, okay, we need X number of people. And, uh, you know, uh, and where we're going to meet and what we're going to do. That's, that's what L'Oreal needs to hear. So I can go ahead and say that we could, we could use them. Yes. And John, we also, so um, for my company, GSK, um, and, and our local offices are in Warren, so it's not far. Um, we have community involvement day, like they're, they're looking for events now but they, they take place around September, October timeframe. So That's if there's something that else you need, like let's let's get it together and I can I can get that in as well. And okay. I, I, don't, I don't know, David, if you can try to uh, influence on your end as well in your company. Yeah, we probably could. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. awesome. We could so, use all the help we can get. I mean, people love this stuff. It's great. They get out of the office, it's a free day and right. you know they get dirty. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, cleaning was just, I, I wasn't sure about it, but definitely on the scoring card stuff, we, we, we need this. So yeah, that's a good um, idea. Let me check, I'll check my calendar for September 9th and see if I can potentially be free as well in case we need to coordinate good. volunteers. Yeah, I'm not available that, that weekend at all, but um, you know. But, but for sure, there's going to be another stretch in um, Passaic Park where we could use a few volunteers for half a day, no question. Yep. Yeah, okay. Sounds Very awesome, good. thank you. So I guess what we need to do is kind of let them know what the opportunities are, what the needs are, and they can in turn let us know how many people they might get given those activities. Yeah, so I think you just need like a description of what the activity is, yep. the, the maximum number of people that you want, because you know, it's sometimes you need to be, it to be manageable, right? Um, and and that way they can they can uh, set up like a sign up to, to fill those slots. Yeah, that L'Oreal is um, September 9th, Thursday. I think so I don't have that. That's uh, that's what the email indicated. Okay, thanks. So, yep. So yep. in two days, when that grant goes public, um, we can start sending out invites, and I can coordinate that with everybody. Terrific. Trucks collection and trucks benches. Okay, so I'm putting in the chat. Um, we are now up to 21,347.19 pounds collected to date. Um, we have generally been averaging approximately 200 pounds collected for the last number of months, which is great. Um, of New benches have been ordered recently. Um, I will have to check on the bench tally, but it's about 23 or 24 benches at this point. Um, Trex has told me that they are backlogged for the number of benches that have been ordered across the country, so we might not receive them in the very near future, but they are on order. And that's it. Okay, hop meeting. Um, the hub meeting for this month was postponed. Um, we we're going to reschedule it for the fall. Um, the decision was made because I'm going to say only the diehard fans seem to show up at these meetings, especially over the summer. 
so we're hoping that um, in the fall we'll get more of a more of a robust participation from many different towns and many different participants with many things that everyone would like to discuss. Date TBD. Okay. Uh, Chem trade, I have nothing at this point. Reforestation at GL, it's summertime, nothing happening. Lower Columbia Park. Um, Canal, uh, as I indicated, I think, um, uh, owes us a favor for some things. And uh, Connell has already been very generous with the town. It uh, apparently donated over $200,000 for a ball field at Lower Columbia Park. Uh, but uh, Carolyn wants to do some more landscaping at the park, and we're looking to uh, get a meeting together with uh, Connell and um, this uh, arterial solutions uh, company to see if we can uh, do uh, a plan for uh, the landscaping at the park, especially at the north end of the park uh, where there's a lot of uh, lawn and wet areas. So we'll be trying to arrange a meeting in the next couple of weeks. Leaf blower noise. I don't have anything. Anybody else? Um, I know that um, the the group that Lois Krauss is co-leading, um, they've been doing a lot. Their meetings, however, meet at the same time as our environmental commission meetings do. So um, I know I haven't been able to attend and uh, Mr. Forger has not been able to attend because of that. Um, I did mention this to Lois, and she is looking into having their next meeting on a Thursday so that um, there's a fighting chance that either Tom and or I will be able to attend the next meeting. And no update I, either from Summit, I guess, huh? because they had a kind of trial run ordinance, right? Yeah, I, I haven't heard anything. They were piloting, basically running a pilot program over this summer, and I haven't heard anything, any kind of an update from Donna, who is the uh, the head of their environmental commission. Okay. EV charging ordinance. Why do we have this? Do we need this here? I don't think we do at the moment. I mean, we, we could keep it on just to see, you know, if, if there is some kind of a gap between what the the law, the state law is now and what we'd like to do in town, then it's it's worth keeping that on our okay. radar. Um, okay. There might not be much talking point to do about it, but the full blown ordinance, I don't think is gonna be a thing anymore because the state law has passed. Okay. Ali, uh, trail map, Grant, Grant, I think you already discussed that, John, right? Yeah, we, we can combine that with um, trails if you want. It's kind of the same thing. Okay. Uh, Passaic River Park, I guess, right? Yeah. Or, or just trails in general, because it'll be a part of a bigger scope and uh, eventually. Okay. Uh, LED bulb giveaway. Renee. Okay, so I still have a, a ton of LED bulbs that can be given away. Um, I know Robert, you had sent an email, uh, I guess it was last week about um, approach for, for families within the school. So do, do you wanna just touch on that? You're on mute, Robert. I know, I just couldn't, I, I, I was having technical difficulties. Uh, yeah, I was thinking we maybe I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of people based on what the criteria we discussed before. And yeah. I'm thinking maybe we could do it as kind of a positive thank you, not just based on need, but also uh, anyone perhaps who's volunteered, um, done anything for the community at all. You know, everyone's planting things, everyone's volunteering and doing stuff like that. I think it would be a nice way to say thank you for your commitment to us. Um, the other thing is perhaps with, with the library, you could maybe do some postings 
um, for seniors, for seniors saying, you know, over 65, if you're over 65 or whatever the age is, you know, we have this contact that this phone number or this email address for free, you know, LED light bulbs, something like that to get the word out that might be more geared towards seniors, as we discussed, in addition to other groups in the community, to the school community, as well as, as I said, something to just say thank you for people either volunteering or um, other groups in our town. Yeah, so, so I think just a couple of comments on that. Thank you, Robert. Um, so the intent of, of the program was to, to distribute those free LED light bulbs to, to um, low income households. Um, but having said that, you know, they are in our hands. They're in, they are in the hands of our township. Um, you know, we're very fortunate. You know, we have, we have a, a, you know, pretty affluent community, I would say. Um, so for the seniors, you know, we, we plan on, on distributing those at the senior meetings and the senior center, you know, there's the new complex, that's kind of easy, but everywhere else. So I've, I've, I've dropped some off at the, um, food bank drop off at little flower. I've contacted mm -hmm. the other religious organizations in town, no response. So I absolutely think that at this point, you know, we have these resources. I, I agree with your approach, Robert, let's, let's. Um, use them as kind of rewards at this point for, for people that have um, kind of given their time and effort towards um, positive efforts. Yeah. So what does everyone think, what does the, the committee think about that? Yeah, I agree. I, I think, you know, we, we've, you've made an effort to try to find a way to distribute it to people who uh, are not as well off uh, and, uh, you know, if you if it's not working, then we'll, let's go an alternate route and thank people for their volunteer efforts. If there's a, another way to find those people, it would be great. I don't know the answer to that. So I think you know these these um, cleanups that we have planned. You know, we we could have a couple of bulbs to every volunteer distribute them, you know, here and there, and we could just have, do kind of that on an ongoing basis, um, ourselves included, right? We all have tons of light bulbs in our house that need to be replaced. So um, I think that's an excellent suggestion, Robert. And if everyone agrees, that's something we can, we can um, plan to do for the future. How many light bulbs are we talking about, Renee? I'll have to do an inventory, but it's, it's hundreds. I mean, I have cases, there's, um, 24 two packs in a in a case and I probably have at least 15. So it's a lot. They use stand, LED stand at the corner of uh, Plainfield and Springfield and hand them out. No, I, you know just what, joking, I, just joking. I, I, I was even thinking of this after you said it, Robert. And maybe those those monthly recycling days, maybe anyone that drops off styrofoam or whatever we can say here you go thank you to kind of do the positive reinforcement and say this is your reward for helping this is you know you're giving back we're giving back i like it yeah so what do we think about that you. that's a good idea yeah, yeah. i think it's a really good idea so yeah. i can I'll, I'll, i can talk to liza and see if for, for the next um one in the beginning of august if we can tr try to implement that terrific Okay, because I dropped off two DVD players and a huge bag of styrofoam this weekend. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, I was going to add, if this continues and you still have that stock and there's always looking for people who want them. <laughs> like, I would take some. Uh, Steve, you, you, you have to give some. <laughs> eventually, eventually, it's, well, they won't go bad, but, you know, eventually, Renee's going to want to unload. <laughs> so. Clear out my garage? Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just want, I'm oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I honestly think, I know it was a joke, but standing, like, in the end, intersection of like Plainfields and Mountain or something, 
I would be willing to do that for like a couple hours or something like two hours just because if we have hundreds like that's like a lot so I would be willing to do that for like on like a for like one day and see how many like we could give away. I, I think it, it's more about, it's not just about giving away. We want to give them away for a reason. So we want to give them away. The program was about giving them away to, to people that can't afford LED, to, you know, because it's it's more energy and efficient, right? Um, now we have more than we, we can chew. So, you know, the people that are recycling, maybe we have, Kim, maybe we can talk to Taylor Rental and say, hey, anyone that drops off a bag of thin filled plastic, here you go. Here's a two pack of light bulbs. You know, I, I like that better than just saying, um, you know, anyone who's, you know, likes freebies, take a freebie. That's, the, that's the, my position. The only, the only thing about that is that we'll be putting an ex, an additional obligation I know. on Paul and he he's done a magnanimous awesome job, you know, um, collecting everything and having his staff load up the truck and take it over to our um, secret partner with Trex so that we're not sharing with anyone else. <laughs> um, and I, I, I don't, I think there are other ways that we could possibly integrate the giveaway. I mean, maybe one of the things that we were thinking of doing is having various contests with Adopt a Drain so maybe we give it out to like certain people who collect X number of pounds for their drain or um, I, I don't know, something else, but maybe we can use it there and give it out for those people who volunteer yeah. that way. So I think I think it, I prefer if everyone agrees or, or not, challenge me if, if you will, um, to use them as kind of rewards for good behavior, for good effort towards environmental causes rather than just giving freebies out, you know, because everyone will take a freebie. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Okay. I, I just have one more thing, just like, I think like people who are like, who want to help the environment are more likely to buy LED lights in general. So like, I think this could be an opportunity for people who are more on the edge to like get involved and then maybe they will consider it more. Just like an idea, like I totally understand what you're saying, but just to try to get other people who aren't as likely to get involved possibly. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for your feedback. The uh, other aspect of that would be if you're doing it, um, Renee, uh, coming from the the town, then it's pretty clear, okay, the town is giving away these bolts. But if you're doing it through a business, we'd want uh, people to know that it's the Environmental Commission or the town that's giving these bolts out. Yeah, again, I don't think Taylor Rental, I, I'm going to take that off the plate on behalf of Taylor Rental because Paul has a lot on his plate just to maintain and collect and deliver the thin film plastics. And I, I just don't think it's right to put an additional, you know, you're helping us out. Thank you very much. You need to give this away every time someone drops off thin film plastic. It's, it's just not fair to put that bar, burden on him. No, that's, that's fair, Kim. I, I completely support that. Okay, anything else on LEDs? If not, I, I have a quick question, and I, I, I know this was something that Alvaro was reporting back to us on, but does anyone have any um, inkling at this point as to what's going on with any kind of LED streetlight retrofit in town at this point? I thought at this point it was not happening. Okay. We can ask uh, Alvaro uh, the next time he's around, or I can email him and ask him if uh, there's anything happening. Okay. Forest stewardship bill, I have not heard anything or seen anything on that. Emerald ash tree 
Emerald Ash Borer treatment is wrapping up. Uh, we'll finish up probably the next couple of days. Uh, green Amendment, haven't seen anything on that. Master Plan discussion. So I think I said. Richard, I'm sorry. Can I, before oh, we move on? Um, there were several trees taken down, including in front of Columbia oh. uh, Middle School. What was that about? Do you know? The ones in front of Columbia, I think, are in connection with the sidewalk uh, uh, that they're putting they, in our green. They first did. And I agree. I think that we should question that. How uh, how are they are they replacing trees that they're taking down? There were trees also on the opposite side of the street from Columbia that were taken yeah. down. Yeah, right, exactly. So, so the ones, the trees I saw that were taken out in front of Columbia were not in the sidewalk. Um, I think they're putting sidewalk on both sides there. They, yes. they are, but, but I don't think it's impeding the sidewalk is what I'm would, saying. It was, it was kind it, of like. Because Board of Ed asked to have some of those removed because they were dying. Okay, but oh, all right. And they're, and they're getting and they're, huge they're, they're, trees, they, huge trees, huge. I think they're scheduled to get replaced. I mean, that, that was my concern too. So I've been asking that they get replaced. And I think I heard that they are. But the, okay. the big ones, because of the size, they were aged out. And I think the Board of Ed requested they'd be removed. Okay. And then the other thing I, I had on trees is I got a random email saying that, um, hey, um, you your your house has been selected to to plant a tree on right of way. Um, do, Richard, do you know anything about that? What's what's I the think deal? I was sending around emails on that. I, I don't remember who, oh God, I think John got one. Yeah, I did. But well, uh, that was from a list that uh, when people asked, uh, you know, a year ago, uh, when we put out a notice, would you like a tree? And I collected those, that list, and then David and I divided the list up and we looked at uh, whether there was a utility line. So that, whether there was a utility line or not, helped decide whether to plant a large or a small tree. Okay, so that's where that came from. So good, so I'm on the list, thank you. I was excited about the email. Um, and uh, that will happen in the fall. So I don't know what John, and we're getting off of our agenda, but, um, John was saying there was something about pink flags on, was it on your property, John? That, yeah, it was It was asked on, on the forums too, but that's unrelated. And uh, I asked Liza and she's trying, I think she's finding out, but uh, that's unrelated to the trees. They're, they're on my property, they were about 10 feet in. So I thought that was the right of way edge, but they've, they've also been on other things like um, telephone poles and fire hydrants. So I, I still don't know uh, what that is. It's not the trees. Okay. I'm, I'm sure it's not related to the trees that we're planting. Um, and these trees that we're planting are uh, being planted by the New Jersey Tree Federation, which uh, is a statewide organization, and they uh, um, use partially use volunteers to plant. Uh, and uh, I talked with them about the kinds of trees to plant. One of the uh, species that we want to avoid are maple trees, simply because maple trees are a dominant tree and in town uh, trying to get, and also the, the other limitation is if a tree is close to the curb, then you want to have a tree that is somewhat resistant to, to uh, salt. So uh, we try to pick trees on that basis, not just because we think the trees are pretty. So it's a practical uh, consideration. Thank you for that rabbit hole. Richard, I appreciate it. Master plan discussion. And uh, I'm looking for this document that I sent around to people. Did people see that? Yeah. Uh, if there's one more recommendation I can make, if, uh, if you guys go look at the Princeton's community draft uh, environmental um, master plan. That was a good read too. Uh, and if you prefer, I could send that around. Um, they develop a vision for sustainability and it's defined at the beginning and then they, they develop a vision and then they get into the specifics later on too. So it's a pretty, it's really, 
advanced, but it's a good thing to see as a you know long-term goal. I, I, and I think that, I mean, this, even though I added things to it, such as uh, plant suitable street trees, uh, uh, decrease impervious surface, I think some of these items might be at a lower level that uh, the municipal planner might say, well, we need to talk about this at a higher level, which is, uh, you know, that's fine. Um, you know, to put in a master plan, encourage walking or biking. Well, yeah, you want to encourage walking or bi biking, but maybe we want to put that at a higher level in the sense of uh, complete streets program and the safe routes to school. And those are the items that I added in. Um, so if anybody has any additions for that, or John, you have specific things from the Princeton plan, uh, please send that to me and I will uh, try to incorporate that into uh, this document to send to the municipal planners. I think just from a philosophical standpoint, I just, it's gotta be a balance between, you know, kind of a dumping ground for all of our wish list items because every committee is going to want to do that and having empty verbiage on there for the environmental commission so somewhere in the middle is kind of the goal because you want people to look at the master plan and say when when, when they're trying to look for direction in a new development or something they should look at the master plan and have realistic attainable language to aim for yes of course um, but i think that's you know, sometimes we get too much into the weeds. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and let me give you a deadline on that. Can, can people come back to me on that within the next week? Okay. For the master plan discussion, look at that document and come back to me. So by next by next Monday? By next Monday, yeah. Okay. Um, and John, if you send me that uh, Princeton document or send all of us the Princeton document, that's okay with- I'll send it around. Send it around. Um, Township cleanup, I think we indirectly talked about this, but um, is there anything more to add there? Township cleanup. I think we said that would be a good fall project, right? For sort of yeah. September, October, when the foliage is dying down a bit and um, the weather's cooler. Yep. MJDEP recycling awards. Uh, David, you did a draft. I haven't seen anything from Angus, but and he's traveling. I, th have... I think Kim and I have that between us. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. the notion was that. Um, we would nominate um, Kim for that, given her um, initiation of the Trex campaign and her um, tenacity over the last year or so in keeping it going. Um, so I've filled out part of the, the application form, and Kim is working on the some back some um, narrative on the project itself. Okay, let us. I, I'm not sure that we captured this as a motion. So you want to make a motion, David? I will make a motion that um, the Environmental Commission, and I will lead this, um, nominate Kim for the um, what's what's the the project? N it's the N J D E P Recycling Awards. That one awards, um, in, and in particular recognizing her contributions to specifically recognizing her contributions to the uh, Berkeley Heights Trex recycling program. I second. I, I, I thousand percent third it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Without objection, we're, we're done there. Um, Westfield Electric Vehicle Show. Okay, so this was another item which we had not uh, discussed so um kim do you want to yeah 
Um, just to add what I said at the beginning of the meeting, um, Lois Krauss, who leads the Westfield Green Team, um, I asked her to provide me with um, a, a flyer or some hard information so that we have more information that's like substantive about the actual show that she'll be doing. Um, it is with the green team and they do have one other, I believe non-corporate person, non-corporate entity coming along. Um, they will have they will have exhibits, as I understand it, by local car dealers that sell electric vehicles. Um, and they'll also have um, educational sessions and demonstrations of um, electric lawn care product, uh, lawn care devices. Um, in terms of helping to helping them out with the event, all that she asked is that we help to promote it. And I told her we will need to see the flyer or we'll need to see a little bit more information about it before we'll be in a position to do that. And that's where we are. So when it becomes available, she'll, she'll give me that information and then I can circulate it to the group. Okay, so at this point, we're just leaving the item as is instead of making a motion to support this? Is that, is that my understanding? I, I think that's the way to go because until we until we see the actual further details about it, I, I don't think we'll, I don't think we should jump up and raise our hands and say, sure, we'll help to promote it. We don't know where and when and who, but we'll help to promote it. I, I just think we need some more details first. Okay. In that case, we have finished our agenda and there's time for anybody to is visiting to make comments on anything. Before we go to um, visitor yes. comments, um, Richard, yes, did we formally welcome Neerith to the commission? I thought we had. I thought I had introduced her a couple of meetings ago. But okay. I, know I, I, I may have I missed I feel that. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. I may, I may have missed met. that. Um, yeah, it's, it's meeting or beginning of a meeting. Meet. It's pretty that we can't meet in person. David has brought that up. I ha still have not heard anything. And as everyone knows, cases are rising. So I think it's there is a hesitancy to have in person meetings. Um, it's uh, too bad. Um, but uh, yeah, me meeting in person sounded a great idea two weeks ago. But um, yeah. It's things change in a hurry. So maybe things will change again uh, sometime in the future. If you know anybody who's not vaccinated, encourage them to get vaccinated. Um, okay, was well, there anything else before we go to visitors? I want to just thank Nareet for stepping up to, to be so helpful and assist in, so early on in the commission. So it's appreciated. Shout out to you, Nareet. Really appreciate it. Really glad for your help and uh, looking forward to working with you going forward. Thank you. I mean, I, I hope I do like a lot of good. And I definitely want to help like my community as well. So I'm really support that part of. Great. Thank you so much, Nareet. And Nareet, I like how you're outside braving the bugs. <laughs> I have been swatting away some mosquitoes, but yeah, luckily I haven't gotten bitten. You're the one that likes nature here. All right. Um, on to one last chance, Mr. Carellis. Well, actually, I, I didn't have anything I was planned, but picking up on the last couple of things, where if you do have in person meetings, where would they be considering the uh, municipal complex access issues? Well, that's the thing. The municipal complex would be where we would meet. Uh, we have to wait for that uh, official word to say, oh, the complex is available. We have not heard that. Yeah, and from what I've gathered from the partial use, you probably for town business could meet if the commission wanted to. And that's the first issue as you were talking about. I suspect you could 
get access even before it's totally open to the public in like the old days? Well, we have to accept guidance from the town. I mean, that's the point, you know, we're, we're not, even though we're, uh, you know, a, a commission of volunteers, we should be following the guidance from the town. If the town says we can meet, then all right, let's see what the conditions are for meeting. Yeah, well, you may you may have to ask him if you're not dying to get back. But the other question is, if you do, when you go back, because we presume that will happen eventually. And I know you've used conference. I've been to a few number of live meetings before the pandemic struck and we went to our, um, and you had telephone call in while many of the folks were there in person. Are you going to continue with uh, a Zoom hookup when you have Zoom meetings in person? Depends upon the availability of the technology, Steve. There was a TV that uh, was I guess a, la a, lap a laptop and a, uh, and a uh, internet connection, right? Yeah, there was a TV in our uh, in the meeting room uh, with the uh, internet connection. Uh, yeah. so anyway, technically, I bring, it was technically possible. I don't know what's I don't know what the plan is uh, moving forward. Well, it's just going to be food for thought because I knew you still had uh, remote access via the phone. I distinctly remember that. All right, that's my closing input. Thank you. Anything else from anybody? I actually had a question for um, Mr. Corellis. So as, as an outsider, you've joined several of our meetings. Um, I think feedback's a gift. Um, and I, I'm, I'm personally a person that, you know, thrives on continuous improvement. Can you maybe give our team, our committee, feedback on, on how we are operating as a committee, in your opinion. Well, you get you get your agenda items. It's, it's, it's I actually, if anybody, I, I want to get on the town's case, they, uh, they're really inconsistent um, in, in agenda notifications. Now I'm getting it directly now, so it, it doesn't really matter, but this last batch, it got posted by the town but they forgot to do the thing that puts the notification out that tells anyone who's subscribed to the agenda to do it. And when when Pam Yoss was around, I always had someone to go to to keep her on top of that. I don't, she doesn't have an involvement anymore. So, I mean, that's an important thing. Anybody who, who, who externally follows this, has notifications, doesn't necessarily get them on a consistent basis. Um, I'll have to think about your other question, I mean, you deal with your subjects, you get through your agenda fairly well. Um, I guess I'm not prepared to be, I, I give, I can give really deep feedback, but I guess I'm really not prepared to, to do that. But now that you ask, I'll, I'll be thinking about it. All right. If there's nothing else. Thank you everybody for attending. We uh, had one attendant, a person who attended and left early. I think it was a student. Uh, it was, I guess we're, we're running a little bit long for the student. But um, see you next time. Uh, and uh, let me know about the master plan. Any comments at all? Because uh, we want to get that back to the municipal uh, planners. Good night and be well and stay cool. It's another hot day tomorrow. Hey, Rob. Thanks, all.